So good afternoon, everybody. Um, you're all very welcome along to this afternoon's webinar, uh, Three Steps to Positive Media Exposure for Your Business, uh, which is something that's very, very important, I think. And best of all, if we get it right, it can be free. Uh, delighted to welcome Christine Tobin of Solus Media Solutions, who's going to take us through today's webinar. Um, I know Christine has a lot of tips and tricks for us, and she's been working hard to get a lot of input from uh, different journalists locally and nationally as well, uh, which is uh, some great advice to have. Um, just uh, one or two quick things on today. So the session has been recorded and we will be uh, putting it live on the Chamber website. It's normally up within 24 hours of the session. So what we can do is by around about 12 o'clock tomorrow, hopefully we should have it up there and we'll let you know. So if you do want to play back on any parts of it at that stage, feel free. Um, if you've got any questions at any stage throughout the webinar, uh, pop them into the chat function, uh, feel free. And we will also have an opportunity for a Q&A at the end as well. Um, so if you have any specific areas that you want to have a chat about. Um, so for me now, I'm going to hand you over to Christine. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. And uh, we look forward to an interesting webinar. Christine, it's all over to you. Thanks very much, Brian. And yeah, just a huge thanks to Brian and the Chamber for letting me for this uh, invitation to present to all of you today. So it's fantastic to see you all here um, and delighted to be able to bring these tips to you. And hopefully you can put them in your toolbox, your business toolbox for the for the coming months and for the, the year ahead and, and ongoing, you know, um, beyond COVID, um, these skills are fantastic for any business to have. And I'm a big believer that every business should know how to talk about their uh, what they do uh, with media. So look, we're just going to uh, share a screen. I'm just going to jump over here. Um, one second, a slideshow. So yeah, so it's nice and simple. Uh, three steps to getting positive media exposure for your business. And um, uh, my name is Christine Tobin and uh, my business is Solace Media Solutions. I'm a journalist and a media consultant and coach. And uh, I help people get positive media exposure for, your, for, for their business, as simple as that. Um, so thanks again, as I said, for, for, for joining, for, for tuning in today. There's lots of you there. Um, I take it that you're all either working in the marketing field or in business yourself or, you know, and, and, and curious about how to make this work for you. So we're going to, through, we're going to go through the three steps. So step one, how to spot or create a media opportunity. We'll look at oops, daisies, uh, how to package your story for a newsroom, how to pitch your story to a journalist. And then we'll have some more tips from some uh, well-known journalists as well at the end. And we'll have a Q&A session. So uh, keep uh, your questions, put them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. So very quickly, what is media relations? Uh, so if you can see over to the right there, you've got Samantha from Sex in the City or Emily in Paris. Um, for me, it's none of that. Right? It's really about, um, it doesn't look like that, certainly not now. Um, uh, it's, it's a branch of public relations. So there's different elements of uh, public relations. You've got crisis communications, strategic engagement, all of that. Public rela um, media relations is about getting positive media exposure for businesses and brands. And um, we do that through media campaigns. And the campaign ob objective really is to help people to know, like, and trust you is what you're trying to do. And probably it's the same objective with your social media. You know, any, any type of outreach like that is to get people to know, like, and trust you. And so the mediums that we're talking about, print, radio, online news. Um, so for example, Carlo Live or journal.ie, um, TV, and also podcasts as well. So there's some really good opportunities with podcasts in various different, um, you know, for their different sectors or for business lifestyle. And then we're looking at national and regional media, um, you know, the importance of that and, and even international media. So your campaign could focus on that as well, you know. So the relationships that we're talking about in media relations, we're looking at, you know, journalists, you'd be working with producers, presenters, editors. These are the new relationships that you want to form. Um, and so my own background, I've been a journalist for 17 years. I'm a former deputy editor and business editor. And in that time, I have received over 160,000 pitches from PR companies and individuals. Now that seems like a massive um, exaggeration, 
but I've actually calculated it, estimated it, and, and it's about right. And I think most journalists would say their inbox, it just fills up so fast with pitches. So you have about three to five seconds to get somebody's attention. And so that's the importance of getting it right. Because on the other side of it, then I've only written about 10,000 stories. Now that's actually a lot of stories, but compared to the amount of pitches. So, you know, you do say no a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about stories. And, you know, if we bring it back to our own lives as people, um, stories really affect us, you know. First of all, history. We wouldn't know anything about who we are or where we've come from without history, without the stories of, of our heritage, without our family stories. And these are stories that have been told and, and the craft and art of storytelling uh, has been brought forward. And so we understand ourselves. Fantasy, you know, as children, we might fantasize about being one of those Disney characters or, you know, I think celebrity or the modern uh, version of Disney characters for adults, you know, we fantasize who we want to be. And, and then you have real life stories, you know, and I'm looking at a photograph there of Vicky, the wonderful Vicky Field and, and little Adam. And those stories inspired us and they confront us as well. You know, they're very confronting and hopefully they change us, you know, so stories are powerful. So in media relations, we're looking at news stories. So you're turning your story, your business story into a news story. OK, and when I was training to be a journalist, I was told that your story must educate, entertain, inform, inspire people. And um, oh, just move my thing there. And you know, your stories are information uh, and uh, about information and event that impacts people's lives. So it's it has to be relevant uh, to people's lives as well. So there's a lot of business stories and personal stories that are while are interesting and might be relevant to other people's lives. Uh, people might not be able to relate to them. Now, on the side, there is a lovely piece of broccoli. Yum, yum. Right. But that's you know, we're talking about the difference between and the similarities of a news diet and your food diet. And as a former news editor, I would have been in the seat and, and the one who's deciding what kind of news diet we're presenting our media consumers with. So while you have a uh, broccoli, you know, you'd have vegetables and you'd have dessert and you have meat in your food diet. Uh, likewise, in your news diet, it's important to have balance. So journalists and editors are constantly working on their platforms to make sure there's a good balance between broccoli stories like politics, a bit bland, but it's good for you to note. Um, and also maybe the, the meaty stories, the, the ones that are hard to digest, the crime, and then the dessert stories. So the kind of the fluffy stories, Megan and Harry is a kind of a, we won't talk about that, but um, you know, that's a, a, an example of a story that uh, is kind of in the dessert one. And so um, new stories are another, word for it is, is earned media and uh, it's earned because you're newsworthy and this is versus you know paid and advertising and owned media which is your website and social now before you start your campaign it's like getting into a car you have to ask yourself where are you going you know and um, and a media campaign can be one story or a series of stories and before you start set off on your media journey, you have to ask yourself, what, what's your objective? Where are you going with this? Why am I spending time on this? What does good look like? Uh, and, and make note of that, you know, and write it down and be realistic as well. Identify your audience. Who are you trying to talk to? Who are the people that you're trying to reach and what kind of media are they consuming? You know, is it, is it stakeholders? Is it um, prospective clients? Who are you trying to reach? What age? You know, and if you've done some work on your business and, and you've looked at your business, you'll understand and you'll know these things. So write it down. What does good look like? And also consider the campaign process. It seems like a funny thing to say that the coverage is not the only thing you get or that the coverage isn't the only thing you should aim for. Um, the media relationships that you're going to establish are really important. So like any relationship in your business, establishing um, those connections is really important. So take time to do that because that's you're adding value to your business by having those relationships. Also adding value, value to your business, the, the understanding that you're getting um, around your business and learning how to communicate about your business in a way that's engaging and interesting. So the process of having a media campaign is good for that as well. And also if you're using 
uh, media outlets that have an online platform, which most do, you can boost your um, social media, website, SEO boost. You can, you can bring it all together and have your traditional PR and traditional media relations and stories complement all of your online work as well. And the other thing is with that, with your communicating about your business, as I mentioned there, a lot of people come to me in that startup phase and they're talking about customer value propositions. And I've actually read that in a press release. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you learn how to talk about all of that jargon, distill it down into real everyday layman's English, you know, and that's really important as well. I've gone backwards there. Oh, so um, step one, how to spot a creative media opportunity. Um, again, when training to be a journalist, uh, we learned that the questions that you have to answer in a story are the following, who, what, why, where, when, and how. Um, now, I consider these to be really good windows of news in your business. So if you imagine your house, your, your business is a house, and these are your windows that you can look in and see, well, what's interesting in here? So who, the who of your business, who are you? Who have you? Uh, you know, what's your background? Uh, where you? Where, you know, where did you work beforehand? There could be something interesting about you as a business owner, or your team members, or your suppliers, or customers. So, check, check, have a look and see. Uh, you know, the who of your business. So, what? What product or service are you providing? Um, and how is that interesting and relevant to people today? Um, what problem did you solve in the market? You know, what are you providing a solution to? The why of your business is massively newsworthy. Uh, most businesses can talk about the why of their business with passion. And that's why you get really good engagement and a nice engaging story. What was it? What was the catalyst for uh, setting up your business? And then where, when and how? So where it could be, you know, you've relocated your business, uh, when and how? So when is, you know, the COVID uh, aspect as well has come into that. I got some coverage um, a couple of months back because I started my business during the pandemic. So the when was, was relevant. And don't worry if you don't get all of this on, on paper, you can watch the webinar later again and take notes. So I do recommend that you take notes, perhaps with what's resonating with you from listening to this. So if something comes to your mind, take note of that. But you can always come back and, and read this. So the news formula. I think there is a formula to it. I think you might all agree um, that there are certain topics that you keep reading and hearing about. Would you say that? Like, put, put your hand up if you think, yeah, there's definitely some kind of a, a method to the madness. Yeah, there is. And I think, I don't, I don't know if anyone's actually identified it. I think it has something to do with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I actually think, you know, shelter, food. Yeah, I think a lot of you are nodding. So there's something around that. And I think back in the day, we might have sat up on a mountain or the, the head of the clan or the tribe would look out over the horizon and say, well, what's happening in our community? And as people, we look to the news to find out what is happening in our world. Are we safe? Have we food? Have we shelter? Is our health safe? Um, and that's how we scan the horizon and scan our community. So I've taken a few of these that could be relevant to relevant to business and we'll go through them. So events, events are newsworthy. Use, you know, to take this webinar as an example, um, you know, I didn't have anything newsworthy happening in my business, you know, in the last, for the next month or two, just going about my business, same as, but this event has allowed me to get, I've actually got publicity. So a bit of um, ex media exposure for this. Some of you might have read a story, you know, um, Brian sending, sending out the newsletters as well. So there's some exposure there. So the event was newsworthy. It's of interest to people. So have a think about, you know, if you don't have something going on in your business, um, can you organize an online event or, you know, after COVID, can you hold an event that's newsworthy? Um, especially newsworthy if you can bring in some charity element to it and raise some funds for a good cause too. This one is a big one, track a trend. We've seen a lot of these stories this, this year and last year, track a trend. Tell us about how we're living. Tell us about ourselves. Uh, for example, there was a story from a solicitor about the, the rate of divorces has gone up. So that's tracking a trend. It's telling us how we're living. So especially good if you're in a service uh, or an industry that's providing advice and information to people or people are coming to you with problems and you're solving it. Or you can see from whatever business that you're in, Maybe you're in the hardware business and you're saying, gosh, people are doing a lot of painting or, you know, whatever it is that you can track a trend. So there's sometimes some interesting uh, information there. If you can back that up with data, 
uh, even better if there's some reports out in your industry if you can um add to that then with an emotional kind of element or a real life story um then that's really great as well awards so if you've won an award uh, media love to uh, celebrate with you um, the I suppose the more prestigious the award the better I mean if you look at Cartoon Saloon the amount of coverage it's getting over its awards and what it's doing is fantastic um, because we like to we like to own our own you know and, and especially when you're winning awards it's yay celebration for the county you know or for the the region I'll come back to tension in a moment weather What's Mother Nature up to? Human interest, uh, interesting, you know, stories about people um, that we relate to. Celebrity, you know, the Matt Damon story. D did any of you hear that Matt Damon story? Do you remember that one during COVID when he was up in Dublin and yeah, everywhere, you know? So celebrity is very interesting. Quirky, you know, I once covered a story about a dog that used to go into a pub, sit up, uh, the owner would have a pint, the dog would have a bowl of water and the dog would sing while the owner played piano brilliant story you know just quirky nothing really you know didn't impact anyone's life but it made people smile and again funny anything that tracks jobs in the economy again how are we doing with jobs in the economy maybe your company is expanding and you can create some jobs seasonal this is a good one always opportunities mother's day uh, international women's day is an example of that that's a story that comes around every year and it's really easy to prepare something and just think outside the box as well what can you do this different insects is a big one in seasonal as well if you're you know a pest um pest extermination company you know people love to hear love and hate to hear about spiders and different um, <laughs> creepy crawlies and stuff, you know. So there's opportunities or taxes and whatever it is that you do. What are the interesting um, points of the year and what does your diary look like, you know? Property, so, you know, again, coming down to shelter, health, children, food, and the supply of food that is not just, you know, restaurants, but pets, we're obsessed with pets. A local angle of a national or international story. So um, Brexit, is a good example of that. So something that's happening on the big scale, on the bigger picture, how do we um, localize that and zoom in? Can you talk about how something up here in the national news or the international news, can you tell journalists, well, this is what it's actually like on the ground. Innovation, did you invent something or create something? We had a lot of innovation stories during COVID during, about PPE and companies setting up to do really great stuff in that, in that space romantic did somebody get engaged in your business or on your premises or something like that maybe you have a parachute jumping um uh, business and somebody asked proposed while jumping out of a plane or something and relationships again you know any kind of um insight so the tension story be very careful with these stories you're reading uh, and listening to stories about we'll say restaurants opening up and what have you um, strike action. Um, sometimes the opportunity here is an opportunity, not so much to get publicity, but sometimes to put a little political pressure on, you know, you might want to get the attention of your local TDs and maybe um, some organizations. It might be a call for solidarity within the industry. Um, it might be that you want to bring attention or highlight that there's some legislative changes going on there might be tension in your industry and a little bit of a push out into the media gets that solidarity. Be very, very careful with those stories. Um, you never want to criticize your competitors. You don't want to bring any negative attention on yourselves and be very, very measured and controlled when you talk about your business or your sector in one of those stories. Um, so the tension, look, you could, you could look, if you listen to the news, um, you know, today, um, the top story, one of the top three stories, one of them will be a tension story. So something that's happening, there's a bit of tension somewhere. So step two, package your story for a modern newsroom. Um, this really is a kind of a shopping list. And again, don't worry if you don't get to take all of this down, it'll be on the, the, the website within the next 24 hours or so. So there are kind of eight things that you should have in your, your toolbox as such for your, your your package. Um, you don't have to have all of them, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. First of all, a press release. So a press release is really, really great um, if you want to introduce yourself to media. Um, I use press releases with all my stuff and all my client stuff. I find they get really good take up. If you write your press release well and you know what's newsworthy and you've referred to you know, your formula and you've, you've checked all of that, um, a press release should do well, you know? 
press releases aren't great for human interest stories. So you're better off to just make a phone call. But a press release is a great way to tell your story fully and to also control the narrative a bit. You know, if you want to steer the story in a certain direction, sometimes journalists will be happy to go in that direction with you if it's a good story and they'll, they'll happily carry it. Keep it under 400 words. That's the challenge for you. <laughs> and so interview notes, you definitely want to take some notes if you um, are getting called for an interview. It's something you can prepare in advance. And um, you just really want to have three key messages, no more than three key messages anymore. And you, you'll just confuse yourself, you know. Um, so just nice bullet points and you can have talking points within that, but keep it to three. Press photos is a big one. Um, there's great opportunities to have your photo put with your story online. Um, if, they, if journalists don't have a photo to go with your story, they'll end up using a file pick and that's a really, that's a missed opportunity. Take the time, um, if you know someone who's a, a proper photographer, hire them to do it, um, you know, or just hire a photographer that we have lots of photographers in the area, fantastic experienced photographers, hire somebody to do it. Take at least five so that you have a variety because you'll be putting all of your media stuff online afterwards and you don't want it all to look the same. You want a variety. Number four is your voice notes. So voice notes are handy. It's a new thing, a new enough thing. You can record a voice note on your phone in a nice clear voice into a speaker. Take again, three of your key messages and turn it into a recording. You never know when it'd be handy if you're working uh, with radio or doing a little bit of radio. Maybe they haven't time to do a full interview with you and you might be able to send it to the newsroom and they might be able to news use that in their news. Keep it to 30 seconds. A video, so maybe you're the one uh, who owns the pub with the dog who comes in singing, or maybe somebody um, proposed in a really romantic way in your business, or there's some visual element to your story. Um, videos are great, keep it to a minute or two. Um, media outlets really appreciate an additional um, element to your story. It's an additional platform that they can advertise on. So it's really great. Um, I'm surprised we don't see more videos. I think it's something there's definitely room for growth in. So have a think about the video element too. Your pitch email. This is the one that scares the bejapers out of people. What do I say? So prepare this in advance. You really just need three lines. One, to introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Christine. I'm a media consultant and coach based in here. Uh, number three, you know, or sorry, the second line is um, what's your story about? Why are you newsworthy? And why, why do you think it's of interest to their media outlet? And number three, I'm available, you know, at this number. You can reach me all day. I'm happy to have a chat with you. Make yourself available. Uh, and that's really your, your pitch email. Nice and simple. The phone call. So prepare yourself. You might need to phone the newsroom afterwards um after you you pitch and um you know wait two days after you send something if you've not um heard back from them uh you can always give them a call and patience put that in your shopping your, your little toolbox as well you need lots of patience when you're doing a media campaign because what you're putting out there you know your output is um what you can control you know but you can't control the outcome you're dealing with a third party you're dealing with a journalist all you can do is your best and put out the best out, uh, output that you can, the outcome is not in your control. So lots of patience. Uh, journalists are very busy. So step three, I'll just take the time, we're good. Step three, step three um, pitching your story. So, so what you've done is you've looked at um, how to spot a media opportunity. You've looked at what is newsworthy. You've taken the formula, the themes and topics, and you've applied it to your business. And you've said, okay, the who, what, why, where, when, how, what is newsworthy about my business? What is the event? What is the thing that I wanna talk about here? And then, you know, you've filled out that story with a package. So you've said, okay, well, I can do my photos to go with this. That's great. I have a press release ready and I'm ready to do an interview. So you're ready, you know? So what you need to do now is talk about, you know, start thinking about the pitch. Uh, how are you going to actually, you know, give that to a newsroom? So this, the first part of it is to choose your media. Uh, you kind of have to stalk journalists, the small bit online. You have to watch and read and listen to who's talking about your kind of stories. 
who's writing about your industry um you know go on twitter and and see you know for make a list or there is a list i think um there's lots of people on on twitter um that you can follow good journalists and you'll see what they're tweeting out um and if in doubt you can always just pick up the phone um you know if it's the irish times or if it's casey law or, or the nationalist pick up the phone and say who's you know who's the best person to contact with a story idea um, in in this particular sector about the sector um, so choose your media so choose um, work out if you wanted to be regional or national media work out which outlets you want to uh, approach and then figure out who's the best person within that outlet uh, and and as I said pick up the phone or just email the outlet the media outlet and they'll tell you straight away because they're happy to happy for you to, to get in touch choose your timing so timing is everything in media. Um, keep an eye on news cycles. OK, you can do set up Google alerts for different words for your industry, you know, um, and and there might be an opportunity, you know, an opportunity might present itself in that kind of way. But choose your timing for pitching as well. Um, you'd be surprised how many people send press releases at half five on a Friday afternoon. So it's the worst possible time. I'm laughing because I sent a press release on Friday afternoon <laughs> myself. Whoops, <laughs> such a hypocrite. Um, when, it, when you're when you're starting out, uh, in my defence, uh, I, I did have some somewhat of a kind of working relationship, and they knew me, and they knew it was coming. Um, but don't send it on a Friday. Um, you know, and if you're contacting a radio station or a presenter. I would suggest that you contact them after they broadcast. So in the mornings or in the afternoons, they're getting ready for their broadcast. So contact them afterwards when they're preparing for the next show, the upcoming coverage or whatever they're, they're, they're talking about in their next shows. And the same with, with newspapers. You know, if you don't know what the deadline is, just call them and ask, you know. Um, so for example, the nationalist, you know, goes to press, you know, um, you need to have everything really in before the weekend for that, you know, is the best thing to do. And then, you know, if there's some last minute or front page news, I think might be Monday, but again, check in with them and uh, find out what those deadlines are. Um, and that goes for all media, you know, and they'll, they're happy to tell you, be prepared. Um, it was funny, there was a big campaign some years back that I was contacted about and there was this wonderful press release and this wonderful package sent out and I thought, great, I'd really like to interview this person for a bigger feature and so I picked up the phone and I contacted and I phoned and there was a message on their phone to say that they were gone on a cruise. So it was an absolute waste of an opportunity. They did everything right. And they gave me a package, they interested me, and then I wanted to do a bigger story on them, and they were gone on holidays. So what they kind of, I suppose what they did is there, that's done now, I've sent that to media, I'm going on my holly bobs. So don't do that, and um, be prepared for um, the fact that somebody might actually ring you from media. Phone, you know, keep your phone switched on for a couple of days, um, be available, and don't overbook your time you know, so that you are available and then be prepared also, you know, to take the calls and and, and also, you know, if there's a bit of growth or, you know, if you're trying to sell uh, an event or tickets and you're trying to get bums on seats, just make sure your website is actually ready for it. Uh, your social media looks good. Be prepared for the attention that you're going to get because that's what you're looking for. And then the email or call question. I actually think email is really good. Um, journalists are very busy and um you know email is fantastic some journalists say to, that they prefer to be called you know that they prefer a phone call but i think the safest thing is to send an email and then follow up with a phone call in a day or two if you haven't heard anything back you know so that's the pitch uh, have i got you all still you're all still awake you're not overwhelmed now this is the fun bit so i actually contacted some really well-known journalists you'll know a lot of them and I asked them to contribute some of their wisdom, their nuggets of wisdom, especially for you guys. I told them what we were doing and uh, oh, and so um, so they did get in touch, but I, I like this because um, what people uh, think journalists look like. So I think people are sometimes intimidated. A show of hands, genuinely, do some people think journalists are a bit scary, a little bit scary? Would you be a small bit intimidated going to them for the first time with a story? <laughs> Right. Well, I can get, I can tell you none of them. Okay. Some of them look a bit hairy, but like they'd be fine if they had a shave. Um, 
some of them are a bit hairy looking, but no, they actually look like this. This is what journalists look like. They're just normal people. They're really happy to, um, to connect with you. And actually, when I got in touch with all of these journalists, they were so thrilled to be able to get in touch and contribute to this webinar. And so there's some very familiar faces there. So for the next few minutes, I'm just going to read out what these journalists have said um, for you. So I asked them a simple question, uh, you know, what would, what's the one piece of advice that you give a business looking to pitch to a newsroom, pitch their story to a newsroom? What are the do's and don'ts, you know? And so they all came back to me with a fabulous amount of information. Now, I've not been able to fit everything into the slides. So if you want to jump onto my blog later, you'll be able to read um, the full responses from them. So give it a little bit of time. You can come back and look at the webinar later and then you can jump over to my website as well and have a look at these responses. So a massive thank you to all of these journalists. So we'll jump into it. So Susan Daly is the managing editor at journal.ie. Um, so it's a fabulous national outlet, um, very busy. So she says, find the right person to pitch to. Emails to the general news address can get lost as so much content is sent there. And that's so true. So many pitches come in, you know. Personalize your email to a journalist and the publication. So, um, yeah, the worst thing to do is if you know the journalist's name, that you say hi there or hi team or hi journalist. Um, or even worse, if you CC all 200 journalists that you want to get in touch with. So personalize your email, target that particular person and just send an, a real genuine email. Journalists might run weekly business profiles or startup spotlights or some other product. Figure out why your business might work there and explain that to them. So like I said earlier in your second line, why is this newsworthy? What is in your company story that appeals to a national audience and do a bit of work to give the person or publication a reason to include you? Sean Defoe is a, uh, you hear him on the radio on a lot of stations there, and um, you'd often hear him on KCLR as well. He says, lead with the most interesting thing you have. Um, just mute this here. Lead with the most interesting thing that you have. Why should the dispassionate observer care about your story over 20 others that might come in that day? Some business have gone about this in different ways, telling their community story, sharing their personal hardship of being pushed to the wall, lashing out at politicians are even threatening to breach restrictions and he did point out that that's not condoned <laughs> as well but he says it's interesting you know how they did get coverage from that once you decide what your unique story or angle is refine it to a snappy line or two lead your email or phone call with that and a brief explanation of who you are include your contact details you'd be amazed how many don't and research the media outlet and journalists you're pitching to fantastic advice there um sorry now oops so the wonderful Emer de Vrainon, we'll all know Emer, and so I was very lucky to work as her producer as well on KCLR Live. She's the head of content at KCLR. So she said the elements of a great story are a hook to grab the listener or reader. What's your angle? A local story that can have universal meaning. Can everybody relate to it? Visuals can be important depending on the medium, such as a good photograph. And then her pitching tips. Don't call a show pitching an interview during a live broadcast. It's usually the craziest time of the day. So again, that goes back to your research. So if you know what time the show is, um, for example, KCLR is from 10 to 12. So don't call between those hours. Um, don't call a radio station between five to the hour and five past as news is on air and it can be all hands on deck and frantic before a main bulletin. Do a bit of homework to know where your story fits in, which show you're aiming for and why. And it's the same with newspapers. You should know the title you're pitching to and where it fits. If you figure this out, you have more chance of landing your story. Excellent. Dylan White. So he's a multimedia journalist um, with Carlo Live would be the, the outlet that you'd be familiar with here. And he has fantastic advice as well. Positive human interest stories captured through storytelling are fantastic for enhancing a business reputation. Did a member of your team just win an award with their Tidy Towns group or a county final with the local GA club? Sing it from the rooftop, the rooftops. Stories should aim to bring value to readers' lives. An attention-grabbing introduction, insightful comments from rele relevant people throughout and a memorable conclusion are essential. High-resolution photos should accompany stories. Infographics are engaging. And there's also the option for video and audio for digital publications. So positively engage with journalists on an ongoing basis, 
create a dialogue and give them a steer with potential leads, journalists will return the favor. That really is about just managing your relationship and minding your relationship with journalists once you have established it. So the wonderful Conal O'Boyle, editor of the Carlo National Nationalist and Leash Nationalist. Um, the golden rule is to ask yourself, do I have something worthwhile to say? Yeah, that's nice and simple and so true. This is the test of a press release. Is the story worth printing? Why should busy journalists give up their time to go to this launch? Why should an editor pay a photographer to go along and take a picture? If you want to attract our attention, pick up the phone or drop us an email. It's much more effective than a press release. We want to hear from you if you have a new product or service that's of interest to our readers. If you're creating new jobs, you've won awards, you're relocating or expanding your premises. Even if you're going out of business, we want to hear from you. He says, it's my job to sell newspapers and make every item that goes into it as interesting as possible. I tend to get very fussy about what I put in it. And um, I think Conan is actually a lecturer as well in journalism. So he, he sent me some fabulous information. I'll put that on my blog later as well, which you can follow up with. Ralph Riegel from the Irish Independent. So Ralph does a lot of crime reporting as well in the Cork area. And I just thought it'd be really interesting to ask him his opinion. He says, know your message, your target audience and the paper or radio station you're dealing with. He said, I'm baffled by the quantity of press releases I get from qualified PR people who think I can write about stove promotions, hotel deals, supermarket openings, etc. It's obvious they don't read the independent. So know your target media outlet and what the journalist you're talking to writes about. So that's nice and simple to the point. John Purcell then uh, from KCLR and also the chairperson of the Independent Broadcasters of Ireland. And he's the presenter of The Bottom Line, which is the business show on KCLR on Saturday morning. So um, a great one for, for any of you in that area in Carlo Kilkenny. He says, think about how to stand out from the crowd. What is your hook? Great stories can come from company milestones, awards, company launches, new product launches, employment opportunities and local angles connected to national or international stories. He says, do your research, know about the organization you're engaging with and ensure you're contacting the correct department or individual. He said, do make your story interesting and relevant to the target audience or the media outlet. He says, understand that journalists are often working with limited resources. Present your story at the right time in a professional manner. Emphasize the story rather than a bid for free publicity. Be prepared to engage with the media. And he says, don't send a generic email and don't submit a story or a request an interview at the last minute. And good tips there. And finally, Dean Egan, so he's the head of news and sports there at Beat 102-103 FM. Uh, I think he was, with, he was with KCLR as well for a time. He says, we don't always get time to read each email in detail. So we often just scan the subject line and the body of the email. It's in those couple of lines that you sell the idea to us. We cover five counties in the Southeast. So it's not always easy to catch on to every story. Grab our attention straight away. Look for the angle on your story that isn't necessarily traditional. Don't write your media release like an ad for your business and always include your media statement or press release in the body of your email. So that's an interesting piece of advice from Dean. So they all kind of see uh, the same thing and but in different ways. Some think that a press release is good. Um, some say phone, you know, um, and, and um, Dean there says actually put the press release into the email as well. So some tips there. So I hope that was useful for you. Um, and as I said, there's a lot of information um, there for, for everybody and uh, I wasn't able to fit all of it onto the slides so I put it on the blog and you can read that later. So just to recap, so there we have it ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've <laughs> that's a lot of information for you. Um, I could have talked to you for another two hours uh, on, on this subject and um, but I wanted to give you information that is really useful to you you know and there really is those three steps and I think that's the main thing that you take away from that you understand first of all that you need to know what's newsworthy about your business but you can also create things you know create ideas uh, for your business and actually another thing that I thought of there on that point is um, surveys and data is something I actually just thought of um, so quite often you can do a survey monkey and if you get a good response uh, I think 500 is a good, um, a generous sample, a, a decent sample, um, just on different um, newsworthy elements of your industry or, and, and what have you. Um, you can actually create a press release from, from that kind of stuff as well. But again, there'll, there'll be more information on the blog. Um, I'll put all of this um, 
the information from the journalist on the blog. And as I said, Brian has this um, webinar back uh, online in the next 24 hours. So step two. So the next thing you need to know is how to package your story for a newsroom. So you know what's newsworthy. How then do you put it together so that you can step three, present it to a journalist? So that's what we've looked at. Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how to do that. Um, it's it's uh, it's as simple as that and don't be intimidated and I think the thing is too is to have confidence you know and to remember that journalists really do want to hear from you you know those journalists those eight journalists that I contacted were so keen to um, pass on that information and that's because they really genuinely want to hear from from people in business you know and um, they're, they're keen to hear your stories so we get to the fun bit does anyone have any questions so Feel free to just, um, Brian, if you you might want to help me out there, if you see somebody and I don't see someone. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know there's one there just coming into the chat box there now at the moment. Lovely. Oh. Um, would you recommend that your press release is in a graphic format or is that a waste of resources? No, definitely. I would keep it either in, two, there's two formats, as a Word document or um, copy and paste it then directly onto the email. Um, the worst thing in the world is a press release that's sent in a PDF format. So if you understand, I suppose, when you think about how a journalist, what a journalist does with a press release is they want to, yeah, perfect. Um, actually stop that share screen. Yeah. Yep. So they, um, they take your press release and they will literally, they might copy and paste it um, onto a Word document or whatever content management system they have, and they'll edit it then, they'll take information. So they wanna be able to use the words. Um, I can't understand people that do PDF um, press releases because you definitely want the journalist to take it and do something with it afterwards. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Right. It was quite interesting uh, describing broccoli politics. <laughs> I think there's um, probably a lot more health benefits though on the broccoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know plenty of people who think broccoli is a bit of a dessert. Do you know what I mean? They think politics is great fun. And yeah. it can be. It certainly can be. Um, yeah, you know, our, our broccoli can be sometimes the alcohol of the diet, you know, <laughs> kind of all, all too consuming. Um, but yeah, so so the, the news diet is very similar to, um, you know, it's like anything. You, you can't have too much of one thing. And I suppose the importance of that message really is about how newsrooms need to balance their coverage and and that allows for opportunities for businesses to come in with their stories not only do newsrooms have business sections and business coverage but you know quite often a business will actually just have a really good human interest story um you know so so there's happy stories within your business because your business is made of people you know and people do great stuff you know people do silly stuff too but people do great stuff that is of interest to people so you know, there's always great stories in a business. And I actually find when I do a news hound session, which is my planning or my consultation session with clients, most businesses are sitting on about three to five stories that they don't realize they can actually get immediate coverage on. Uh, and just if, just by picking up the phone to a journalist or, or sending a, an email. So it's really good it opportunities there. A lot of people kind of forget to, you know, shout out about the good things that are going on in the business. And a lot of people in business as well, they tend to see what they're doing as their normal day to day. And they don't realize sometimes that what they're doing is very innovative compared to what uh, other people are doing. And it's those little things to pick up on, to shout out about. But I'd even, you know, if anybody wants to um, open a mic, you feel free to ask any questions or whatever that way. Uh, I suppose one even thing I'd be interested in finding out from people, you know, have people, you know, who haven't sent press release before would be more interested in engaging with the media in that way or you know would they be nervous about i suppose engaging with the media still i know that pictures that christine said you know it showed us of what we think journalists look like um and it is it's kind of you know there's even one or two people in case you know or you i would have heard them constantly on the news for years and you'd always nearly have a picture in your mind of what they might look like and then you meet them in reality in a totally different person um but we're all human and and you know yeah. keen to hear from people you know that's our currency stories are currency in journalism so that trading of you know people phoning us with stories and while journalists might be busy and kind of say oh i'm just i'm on deadline you know 
um, they, they definitely want people to get in touch, you know, but uh, I, I'll tell you, if you phone a journalist at five to the hour when they're about to go into the news booth, though, they will bite you. <laughs> so don't do that. They'll bark. They'll growl. But uh, you can always phone them back 10 minutes later, though, you know. Yeah. Um, there's just a question here from Mary. Uh, we're a group of 10 makers and our website web designers suggested having a press area on our website. Is there any point to having this? Uh, great question, Mary. Um, if you get a lot of press, yes, you know, um, that's definitely a good idea. If you have a, a media um, element to your website, you could also use your blog, which is what I do. So the blog is your dynamic part of your website. Um, you know, you have a larger amount of indexes there, which is great for Google as well. So, um, you know, you can use a blog. For that so every time you get some coverage you can put it on a blog as well so it's up to you but i would only recommend that if you're actually getting a lot of coverage because it doesn't look great if you go into a news section and it's empty so um maybe hold out until you do a big campaign or you do have a lot of coverage so it really depends on on how much coverage you have but feeling that you can always use your blog and that allows you to push out links as well onto your social media and um, and especially good, actually, um, now we didn't get to talk about digital PR. Um, we might look, Brian, at another workshop, another webinar for that. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other area is when you use your traditional earned media. So, for example, if you have a piece in the Irish Independent, you were very newsworthy, you have something that's of national relevance and you get it in the Irish Independent and if you know or, or another outlet. And if you've given them a link for your website or to a page, um, and they put that on, that's really, really valuable link. So um, we'll say the Irish Independence Google Authority rating is up in the 80s and it's a rated out of one to 100. So that's in the 80s. You know, I think Journal.ie has a high rating as well. All of these websites have massive Google authority. So to get your business mentioned on them is brilliant. To get a link is even better that you can correspond with links on your website. Um, and that's just all really, really good SEO stuff. So, um, so yeah, so always good to have links uh, to, to media coverage. Another thing you can do is you can ask um, whoever looks after your IT or your uh, design side of things to put um, media links on your signature as well. You know, you can say as 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 heard or as seen in or you just, you know, you can put them on your signature. You can put them on the, the top of your website, you know, stick them on as little stickers. Like if you're a member of Carlo Chamber of Commerce, you might have that as a sticker on your website, but just put it up there. So you know, and, and, and activate them so you can click into the coverage. So there's lots of different things you can do. Yeah, great question though, Mary. Can you explain David about recycling asking. content, yeah. David? Yeah, fabulous question. This is, I love recycling content, recycling and repurposing content. Um, brilliant. So if you imagine, I'll give you an example. This is what good really looks like, okay? So you have a monthly blog, you're in a service or an industry that there's lots of information and maybe you're in HR or you're in um, financial planning or you're in one of those wonderful industries. And so there's lots of insights you can give in your industry. So if you have a, a monthly blog and you're choosing your topic that's relevant, and again, you know, go back to your, your keyword searches. If you've done some SEO work on your website, you've some keyword searches uh, or look at the themes as well, your topics and themes that are newsworthy and interesting and glean something from that. You have your blog, you write your blog, so, and you put it on your website. Take that blog and, and separate it, divide it into, um, you know, different content for your social media. So if you have, excuse me, if you have five tips or five things you didn't know about or you do one of those wonderful featured snippets, um, separate it into five days, you know, chop it up and divide it. Take a paragraph from your blog, something that's really, really good piece of advice. Take a paragraph and make it into a meme, make it into a photograph. You know, you can use Word Swag is a really good app for that as well. And Canva, if any of you um, don't use Canva, I highly recommend it for repurposing content. Um, take a, a paragraph or two out of your blog and record a video of you actually just talking it into the camera. You know, go for a walk or, you know, have a nice background and talk it in. Um, Upload yourself saying it into a SoundCloud cloud or reading the blog into a SoundCloud. There's loads of different ways you can repurpose that information um, and put it all across all channels, you know. So I hope that uh, answers your question there, David. Anybody else have any questions? There's no uh, right or wrong questions. It's all 
relevant to uh, and there's you know the the approach to media campaigns is as different as your businesses and is as different as the organizations that you work for work in or work with you know um there's no one size fits all i think in a media campaign you know um but if you can actually learn the basic skills and do it yourself you're going to save yourself um a lot of money obviously um, you don't have to hire somebody like me to do it but you can if you want to but um you can save yourself some some money but it's a really fabulous skill that you can um that you can use not only in media but you know for your social media just getting that understanding of how to talk about your business and even in presentations you know if you're a member as i said in chamber or a networking event when you stand up or you're online you talk about your business it, uh, it gives you massive confidence and and you're removing all those references to customer value proposition and customer segments and all that kind of um jargon you know which is great in marketing but when you come to media and talking to the public um oh lovely um Thank you, Sharon. You have to head away. Thank you for joining us. Um, the word blog, is it becoming a dirty word? <laughs> um, Ellen, that's a good question. I don't know, is it? Um, I'm still a big fan of blogs. I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, personally, I think they're still great. Um, you know, and, and jump, bouncing off of what David asked as well, sometimes a blog can actually be, you know, if you have interesting blogs, some people send them to media and they turn into stories, ideas for stories. So for example, if somebody is in an in industry and they have a blog, they send it to a newsroom and they think, oh, that's quite interesting for our business feature. Um, we're gonna we're gonna tease that out a bit more on an interview, or that'd make a really good business story. I'm gonna ring them about that. So so the blog is is quite useful, you know. Um, yeah, I'd love to if you can elaborate on that that question. We're that's an interesting question, Ellen. You wanna throw a bit more on there? Um, what are the best photos to use? Okay, definitely not selfies. <laughs> Um, if you can, as I said, getting a photographer to take a photograph is really, really good. Um, and you don't want selfies of you in, in uh, unusual situations, you know, um, try and tell a story with your photo. So you often get photographs of people with a tree behind them. Now that's great if you're an arborist, wonderful, right? But most people, but if you're a HR manager or you're a psychotherapist or you're making jewelry or you've got a pottery business or you're a CEO of a chamber of commerce, you, you kind of want your, your photograph to tell, to tell a story and any good photographer will be excited by that opportunity to be creative. So think outside the box a small bit with your photograph and, um, and, and that's what it, so then you're looking at landscape photographs, uh, full color, no watermarks, um basically a good a good rule of thumb is actually just buy a newspaper <laughs> look at what they use there you go buy a newspaper and have a look um and then have a look you know at online as well you'll see where there are file pics used and it's just a missed opportunity because you can um get your business name on a google image search then you know so if you look for my name not only am my business, not only will you find websites and stories, news stories, and I'm on the Chamber website, but you also find my photographs in the Google image section. So, you know, <laughs> you can really kind of get out there a bit more. Um, any other questions there? So, um, yeah, great. Okay. Anyone, anyone else want to ask a question? You can type it or you can just put your hand up and we'll and unmute yourself there. Donna, have you any question there? Mary, we we'll start picking on people now. <laughs> Please feel free to ask any question at all. Random question, the more random, the better. Is Mary, is she able to unmute there? So I can, no, she's okay. Are we good? Oh, oh I think, have you it locked, Brian? Uh, I'll double check it there. I thought it was uh, open, so. Um, okay. Good question here from Donald. Start local first. Um, Donald, great question. All depends on the story. So if you have a story that is of national interest, so for example, if you're after winning a massive, massive award, um, then use take a bite of the national stuff. Or if there's something really, really newsworthy on a national level, grab that national stuff first. So, um, and the reason for that is, is that you, the reach is higher you know what i mean um so do that but you can also do it at the, as the same time as actually getting your local media as well so within the week so you might have something on in the independent or the examiner or the irish times or the journal or whatever you know on a monday and then um have you know be on local media 
again, it depends too on the relationships that you're trying to build. If you feel like you're going to get more from your local media relationships, you can actually be strategic and say, look, I'm going to give you this story before I through you know before I hand it out I'm going to give you the exclusive and to be honest that's a really good it's it's a really good bargaining chip it's a really good way to show hey look I actually appreciate my local media first you know you guys are going to be with me in the long term it's a really good gesture to say hey look I'd really like to 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 kick off this fantastic working relationship with local so it kind of depends on that really it depends on how you want to play it always be strategic and always be targeting your media so think about these things for yourself and, and see where you want to go. I hope that answers the question, Donna. Cool. Great. Mary is unmuted down now. Sorry. Hi. Hi, Christine. Um, this has been really beneficial. Thank you. So I suppose my question is, is um, I've no problem doing the writing and sending out the thing. It's picking up the phone and ringing the person following up. That just puts the fear of God in me. So it does. And, yeah. um, and I don't know why, but yeah, just that that's something that I would be nervous about. So it's great to know the different times. I'm just wondering, is there any particular approach or, you know, if somebody comes back and says, um, we're not going to use your content. You know, is it can, like, you know, can you follow up, we'll say, on that or? Well, there's nothing wrong with. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great question. Brilliant question. I'm delighted to hear that you put stuff out and you're getting out there. That's really good. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, a good follow up question is, look, I'd, I'd love to get some coverage um, from your outlet. Could you offer me any advice or a steer on, you know, what you, what you would be looking for? So, again, you're just being really straight with them and you're just saying, I, you know, I'd love to get coverage. And um, could you give me any feedback? On, on maybe how I could improve my 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 presentation of my stories to you or my pitches to you, um, you know how could I how could I do better with this or is there any element of what I'm doing that would be of interest and always um, make sure that you're not kind of attacking them, you know, because you get people and they get very they get very snotty, you know, and they'd be saying, well, I'll go with your competition, and um, so so always be thankful for their time, you know, and be grateful for their time, and say thank you so much, and ask for their feedback. So there's nothing wrong with that. But also, I suppose you kind of have to um, go back to the drawing board. If you find that that's happening a lot, um, go back to the start and step one and check your step one. Are you newsworthy? Check your, your, your story themes and topics. You know, are you actually, are you putting out the right stuff? Because if you are, somebody will take it off. You know, mm -hmm. so you do have to question, okay, am I doing this right? It mightn't be the pitch. You might need to go right back to step one and work on that and put in the groundwork there. Because fair play, if you have, Two and three sorted is good, but there's a reason I suppose that we took 20 minutes to talk or 15 minutes to talk about step one. And that's because that's really where your homework needs to go. You need to get the angle and the hook right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah and I hope can that I, answers. Yeah. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And just one more question. So I'm dealing with local media fine. So what I'm going to be looking at next are probably national magazines, the likes of Image or what have you. And I know who the people are that I want to target. Now I haven't emailed them or anything yet. I'm yeah. just wondering about press deadlines for things like those national magazines. You know, is it? Yeah. What? Well, look. I'll show you. Yeah. I have one. I have one here. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've got a few more. Sorry, inside my drawer. Yeah. I always keep them handy. You no know when this is going to come up. Um, look, there's another great one there as well, Irish country. Yes. So yeah. you go and you open your magazine. So if you have your contacts, most magazines on two or three pages in will have this page with your oh, contact okay. details. Honestly, just get in touch. Magazines, if they're monthly, you'd want to get in touch with them two or three months in advance. Okay. They're planned in advance. Yeah. So yeah. again, every outlet is different. You know, weekly magazines or you know. Every outlet is different. Um, every news uh, station, everyone's different. And that's why it takes, you know, it, it's good to take your time and actually do your homework on it. So I would advise just, just ring everyone that you want to build a relationship with. Just ring the front desk and ask to be put through to the newsroom and then just ask the questions that you want to know before you even start putting stuff in. And just, yeah. just build that relationship from there. Same as you would with a supplier. Get to know them, you know. Yeah. yeah. Ask any yeah. questions and, and they're happy to answer. Yeah. Super. That's great. Thank you very much. No worries. And just a question here for me as well. Do you have in the subject body of email to journalists as a pitch or how do you word you're looking to get coverage without paying for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually talking about paid coverage, I highly recommend advertising as well as part of a media campaign so that you've got your advertising, your editorial kind of content, you know, your earned media, and then also your social web uh, and what have you as well, all in, into it. But interesting question, do you have a, um, 
in the subject body. So um, no, definitely. And the word pitch kind of makes journalists a little bit prickly because it sounds like a sales thing. And they're always adamant, and so they should be, that there is a line between sales and editorial. So um, there is integrity, you know. So, um, you know, but don't worry about using the word pitch. But no, what you do is you put your headline into. So if you're doing a press release or whatever you're doing, uh, what way you're putting it into, put the most interesting um, sentence together that explains what you're doing. For example, the, um, the subject line for an email that I sent out for this webinar was Chamber, uh, Carlo Chamber to host free media skills workshop. So it explains a who, a what, a where, you know, and it gives kind of the full story, boom. And you don't want to go over 10 words, you know, keep it as short as you can, take your time. It might take you half a day to write it, but it, get it right, you know, um, and that tells them straight away, they see that come into their inbox. You've put a location, you have a county in there that says, oh, that's our, that's our county. Okay, that's relevant. Um, you've, you know, I associated myself with the very good Carlo Chamber so there's you know newsworthy by affiliation there so they, we know the chamber okay it's a free event so I'm not trying to get public I'm not trying to you know not trying to make a million bucks off it um, you know it's a helpful event for business and it explains exactly what it's trying to do so I hope that answers the question so just yeah so it could be um, Carlo uh, Carlo um, painter you know wins carlo artist wins national um artistic award or something like that you know so that you're doing your your uh, being specific lovely great thanks everybody no problem, great. any other questions there i hope that uh get coverage without paying for lovely if there is any uh, further questions anyway that yeah. anybody has after this uh feel yeah. free to get in touch with me at the chamber or indeed, um, we'll be sending out as well. I know Christine had her details up on the last slide, yeah. which is a uh, we'll have that um, on the link, which will come out to you as well uh, tomorrow once the webinar is ready for the playback. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. I know okay. that um, we have a new event launching on next Monday as well, which is our 11 a.m. Chamber coffee break. Um, so that's been hosted by Chamber Ambassador Rachel Dial. It's the first of a new series of fortnightly events, which is going to be about sharing insights and advice um, and a chance for networking in that as well. And I know a lot of people are tired with Zoom, but I think, you know, the idea behind the coffee break is as well. It's at the start of your week, just to step aside, take 20 minutes, you know, whether it's just to realign yourself and get some advice and uh, have a word with a couple of different uh, people from different industries or colleagues. Um, and it's, uh, that's what it's about. So um, we feel free to give us a shout if you've got any queries afterwards. And um, but thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Appreciate Brian, it. Can I can I very quickly mention yeah. as well, just if anyone wants to email me at Christine at solicemediasolutions.com, just with any other questions and I can send out for anyone who the webinar send out a um, contact book for local media so the names and contact details if you are going to do your media campaign you can get in touch with me and i'll send you that as well so and thank you to to brian to all of you for participating and also for our journalists who contributed um for you as well so much appreciated thank you all thanks very much thanks christine take care it's long before.